when we see that His grace is sufficient for us, then we can have more strength. Why do so many people have little strength? Because we don't have enough time to enjoy God. And to enjoy God is better than enjoying food or enjoying luxury. When we enjoy God, we are renewed from the inside, right? How many feel renewed this morning? You feel your spirit renewed this morning. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And God keeps that renewal in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank you for this visitation of God and we thank God and we say, Lord, please continue to work in our lives. Okay, right now I'm going to have a short message because time is really late already, but, but this is very important. So many Christians are lukewarm and they love the world and they think they have heaven and they have the world. But I'm, I want to tell you this morning, the Bible tells us about how we can be saved but we, when we go to heaven one day, when you, you know, some people say, okay, when you enter heaven, and then the angel or God will ask you, why should I let you in? And then some people thought, I believe in Jesus, and so I can enter heaven. Now that is true. When you believe in Jesus wholeheartedly, totally, and your life is changed by the message, then you can enter heaven. But some people just say, I believe in Jesus, but nothing changes. Then the faith of God is dead. The faith is dead in Him. That He's not alive. So when we have faith, we are saved by grace through faith. But when we go to heaven, God is going to judge us, not just by our faith, but by our works. We can look at different passages and we can see that the judgment will be by works. Now we are saved by grace but the works will show that we are saved. And today I'm going to talk about to motivate you to love God and serve God and talk about how we are saved and the fruit of salvation. Now we are saved by when we trust in Jesus as our Savior and repent of our sins, okay? Number one is repent of our sins. Say it together. We are saved when we repent of our sins. We are saved. Sin and trust in Jesus as our Savior. Then we are saved. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. Very easy. Very easy. It's a free gift. When we repent of our sins, I'm sorry for my sin. But there are many people who are Christians, but they continue to have fornication, to have lust, to have greed. And they're not sorry for the sins. They think, I already repented one time. And I ask Jesus to forgive me, therefore I can go to heaven. And I continue to have lust. Some people continue to have lust and they thought they can still go to heaven. Because sins can be very destructive. So I want to say, when we repent of our sins and trust in Jesus, yes, we're saved. But how does the repentance and the faith affect our life? If it doesn't affect your life, you're not born again. Now, saved, salvation and born again are the same thing. It happens at the same time. When you're really sorry for your sins and really trust in Jesus, then you are saved and you are born again. Now, to be born again, when you're born again, you have these six fruits. Today I will talk about these six fruits and I hope you remember. Now, we are not saved by these six fruits. We are not saved by this. But when we are saved, we have these fruits. Okay? The six fruits. First two are related to salvation that we will continue to be sorry for our sins. Say it together. We continue to be sorry for our sins. Say it together. We continue to be sorry for our sins. And then number two, we continue trusting Jesus. We continue to trust in Jesus. Now these are the first two fruit of salvation. For instance, for myself, I, after believing in Jesus, I found that I became very sensitive to sin. And after experience the Holy Spirit when the evangelist Carlos and Antonio from Argentina in South America came to Hong Kong. And he laid hand on me and he touched me. And the moment he touched me, I felt power like electricity, like this morning victory share. That two times he experienced that electricity enter him. And I experienced this electricity at the same time I felt great love fill my heart. I was filled with love and I cried for a long time. I said, Lord. I didn't realize you loved me so much. 
and I didn't realize I can experience your love like that. And then after that, I want to spend long time staying with God, praying to God, and I spend long hours. And then after a while, I found that when I love Jesus and praise Jesus, any moment I say, Jesus, Lord, <laughs> the joy will come out. Anytime I just let, the, let relax, the joy will come out. But I can hold it back. Anytime I can hold it back. But anytime I think of Jesus, the joy will come. I, do, I can call Jesus or just think of Jesus and the joy can come. So I really appreciate that. And when after He laid hand on me, I find my sensitivity to sin is much higher than before. So any moment I have any pride, when I saw someone and I despise a person, immediately the Holy Spirit speaks to me and say, Who are you to judge? He was changed by me and you were changed by me too. There is nothing that is in you that is not from me. And then I repented and say, Lord, I don't deserve that. And I say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. And so God helped me to be sensitive to my sin. And anytime I have any lust in my heart, even I say this will destroy my life and then I hate it. And I turn away if I am looking at a sexy lady and it causes me to have any lust. You mean I say this would destroy my life, I don't want to think about it. I want to just look at the person as a creation of God, not as a sexy lady. And just put down this lust and, and whenever any sin comes into my life, I hate it. And I hope we all are like that. Because the voice of the Holy Spirit is inside us to speak to us. When we are born again, this voice will come to us. When we sin, we feel bad about it. Let me ask you, how many of you would have this voice inside you? Not necessarily an audible voice, but you just have the feeling you feel bad about the sins. Whenever you have sins, you feel bad inside you, can you raise your hand? When you sin and you feel bad, please raise your hand. Raise your hand. Now, now the risk, is it that you don't have it? You know, this is a sign of being saved. Okay, how many? Can you raise your hand above your head? Let me see. Because if some of you don't have it, there is something very wrong. That means you don't have a living relationship with God. If you have a living relationship with God, when there is something wrong in our life, we'll repent, we feel bad about it. That is God working in us. So that is a continual repentance. Okay, put down your hands now. Now for those who don't have this sensitivity to sin, I will ask you to be sorry for your sins and say, Lord, please forgive my sins. I'm sorry I hurt people. I'm sorry I, I have uh, said things that hurt people. I have been angry. I have told lies. I have stolen or I have greed or I don't love God. Then I hope you repent. If you don't repent, if a person doesn't have this continual sensitivity to sin and rejection of sin, there's something wrong in the spiritual life. If you have it, now, some people have it, but they continue to sin and they ask God to forgive. And I want to say that sins are destructive. Sins are destructive. Jesus said to the man in John 5.14. John 5.14. Jesus said to the man who was healed from 38, 38 years of sickness, and Jesus said, sin no more, lest the worst thing will happen to you. When we sin, it can destroy our whole life. Don't think that sins are, you know, pleasure. It's, don't think that sins is fun. Sins will destroy. Because I've known people that their whole life is destroyed. Their relationship with people, their peace, their joy, and the relationship with God is all destroyed. So I hope that you see that sins are like cancer. Do you want cancer? Do you like cancer? You don't want cancer. I hope you hate cancer. So if you know something that can cause cancer, you want to, don't want to eat it. So sins is worse than cancer. Say it with me. Sins are worse than cancer. I want to hate sin and turn away from my sins. If I continue to sin, it will destroy my life. So the signs of being saved first is continue to have repentance. And then continue trusting Jesus, hold on to Jesus. You know, I hold on to Jesus every day. Jesus is my love. I like Jesus. Jesus is so good. Every day I hold on to Jesus. Lord Jesus, I like you. I like you. I want you. 
And I hope you pray like me. You know, some people say, why are you so excited about Jesus? Because I said, Jesus is so good. He gives us peace and joy and healing. He heals my life. He gives me joy. And then I pray for people. There are so many people healed and transformed. Like this morning, these few people, they are transformed by the presence of God. And you say, that is wonderful. Say it together. Jesus is wonderful. Jesus. I want to hold on to Jesus. I want to hold on to Jesus. I need Jesus. I want Jesus to save me. I want Jesus to transform me. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I want Jesus to take over my life. You know, in Matthew 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Seek the kingdom of God. What does that mean? First, you want more people saved. You know, you can have the presence of God, the Holy Spirit's anointing, and then you can have power to pray for people and to lead them to Christ. Now, these few days, from Monday to <coughs> Thursday, I'll continue the training. <coughs> Try to come as much as you can, and you can be trained how to pray for people, how to lead people to Christ, how to serve God. And then, you can lead people to Christ and that is seeking the kingdom of God. You want more people saved. And the second meaning means, I, lo I want Jesus to be my king in my heart. Where Jesus is the king, there is his kingdom. Say it together. Where Jesus is the king, there is his kingdom. When you let Jesus be the king, there is God's kingdom. Let me ask you, is Jesus ruling your life? Is Jesus ruling your family? And ruling your whole life yes. and your work and your family? Yes. Is it true? Yes. Do you still have anger and fights in your family? Do you still have frustration? Do you still have worry? Now these are not letting God take control. So let Jesus be the king means, yes, I want more people to enter the kingdom of God. I want to, be, to let Jesus be my king in my home, in my family, in everywhere. Let me tell you, I don't let any sin to take over me. Any sin, any moment, any moment, any sin appear, immediately I take care of it. Because I know sin is like cancer. It will destroy my life and destroy my ministry. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for the presence of God. The presence of God this morning is telling us, God is pleased with those who love Him. Say it together. God, God is pleased with those who love, who love Him. When you love God, God is pleased with you. And that's why God would do things like this, this morning. So do you want the work of God to be in your life? Yes. So you seek first the kingdom of God. You really hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. So continue in a lifetime. Jesus is my Lord and my King. Say it. Jesus, Jesus is my Lord and my King. King. So the first two fruits. First, now I hope you all remember this. First, repent and hate sin say it together repent and hate sin second hold on to jesus trust in jesus follow jesus okay number three now number three and four are relationship okay number one and two related to salvation because you're saved by repentance and trust in jesus so we continue repent and trust in jesus so these are the first two fruits and then the next two fruits are Having a close relationship with God. Say it. Having a close relationship with God. And then number four, love God. Love God, okay? Now having a close relationship with God. That in uh, John chapter 15, in John chapter 15, that Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. When your vine is in the branches, then you bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. But when you are not in me, you don't abide in me, then you'll be like a branch being cut off and it's dry and it's thrown into fire. Do you want to be a branch like that? We need the presence of God. Did you feel more renewed and strengthened this morning when we pray together and enjoy God? I hope every day you have that experience. Because coming close to the Lord is really good. Coming close to the Lord is really good. Say it together with me. Coming close to the Lord is really good. 
Now, I have three kinds of prayer. I will tell you right now, you can write down, to help your relationship with the Lord. To help build a re close relationship with the Lord. Now, first I want to say this. is John chapter 4, verse 20, 24, about worship in spirit and in truth. Worship in spirit and in truth. So worship with the whole spirit, the whole soul. The soul includes, say it with me, the mind, the will, and the feelings. The mind, the will, and the feelings. So we love God with all our mind. All our mind. In our mind we say, God is the best. Say it with me. God is the best. God is perfect. Everything about God is good. God gives all blessings. So in the mind we agree with God totally. God is the best. I want God only. So number one, really worship God with our whole mind. And second, worship God with all our will. Now the mind, the will, and the feeling are the is the soul. Our soul includes the mind, the will, and the feelings. The will means I make up my mind. Now for a ship to sail. The captain has to choose a direction, right? Now, if the ship is supposed to go to the east and the captain made a mistake and went to the west, what will happen? It will never arrive at that place unless it will go around the earth one time, right? Yeah. So if, if it has chosen the wrong direction, it will not arrive at the place. Now, but then with God, if you choose the wrong direction to sin, you will not go around the earth. You know, with sailing, you can go around the earth and come back. But when you turn away of sin or money, many people have made up their mind. I want money. I want, I want the world. I want a beautiful girl. I want a beautiful, uh, handsome man. They just think of this. Some people, they made up their mind, I just want this. If they made up their mind, they want this, actually, they won't get it. The more they want the world, the more they suffer. Have you noticed some people, they seek after the world, and they suffer internally. Even when they get it, they don't get joy. But when you seek God, you can have everything. So the direction is very important. Now, I am, I, let me tell you, I'm 66 years old. 66. But I'm still strong, and I don't need eyeglasses because the Lord blesses me. I don't need eyeglasses to read small letters. Mm -hmm. I don't need eyeglasses to see things far away. Mm -hmm. I thank God because when I love God, God blesses me. Now, I, I don't deserve it. I'm saying I don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. Actually, God chose me when I was a sinner, when I was weak. But God changed me and I say, I really want to respond to God and I obey God totally. So I really submit to God. And then I say, Lord, please help me. You know, that I, my life will be used by you. I'm 66 and a half right now. If I have to retire at 70, many people retire at 70. I say, no, no way. Three and a half years, too little. <laughs> How about retire at 80? 13 and a half years, that's still too little. Lord, give me, if possible, 100, 120 years. Yes. Amen. <laughs> And I see God blesses me in every way, every single way. You know, God gave me a wonderful wife. I have my pic her pictures in my cell phones, but my cell phone is over there. But this is her picture. She's a very wise woman. This morning when I'm away, she preached in Hong Kong. She has given me good ideas. Now, many people said, Pastor Yim, your teaching is very good. But my wife can still give me suggestions how to improve her. So God gave me the perfect wife for me. And God gave me the provision so I can go to different countries. Amen. Let me tell you, it's very expensive for me to come here to host this convention. It's more expensive maybe two times or three times than in other African countries. But still God provided for me that I can provide for this convention and I thank God for that. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. It's not me. But when we follow God, when you made up your mind to follow God, God will bless you in every way. 
I play the piano, I learned the piano for less than a year, but I can play very well. So God gave us ability, and God gave me the presence of God, and ability to speak to people, to draw their attention, to speak English clearly. All these are gifts from God. So we thank God. Thank you for all your gifts. Amen. Say it. Thank you for all your gifts. I want to dedicate my life to you. I want to dedicate my life to you. So when we worship with all our will, yes, my life belongs to you. My life doesn't belong to the world. I seek the Lord. I don't seek money. Now, although we do work, we do work for money, but we don't go after money. Money is not our goal in life. When you have that heart, God will open the way for you. Let me tell you, when I was a new Christian, I already start to tithe as soon as I start walking. I obey the Lord, whatever He tells me to do, and I told many people about Jesus. And the Lord opened the way. Someone asked me, do you want to go overseas to study? And that's why I could have one bachelor degree and two master degree in theology. Mm -hmm. I did not have the money to go for that. But God would provide for me that someone offered that to me. Amen. What I'm saying is when you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things will be added to you. So when you worship, you worship with all your mind, all your will, and all your feelings. Now this is the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit and have strength. Now some people they pray like this, Oh Lord Jesus please help me, I need money. I need help, please heal me. It's just talking. If it's just talking, sometimes it doesn't, you know, it's not as powerful because we're not worshiping in spirit and in truth. But when we learn to like God, you know, I like God very much. I like God. I like everything about God. Do you like water? Yes. When you drink water, it feels good, right? Yes. God is good to create water. Yes. Do you like to sleep? Do you enjoy sleeping? Yes. God is good that He created sleep. That we can all be refreshed every day. Do you like your eyes? Yes. You can see the beauty around us. You can see all the good things around us. Yes. Thank God we have the eyes that came from the love of God. Has anyone given you gifts like that? Your no. eyes are gray, your everything? No. But God has given us so much. Do you like God? Yes. You know, I like God very much. I'm on fire for God. I like God. Oh, I like you. I like you. <laughs> Some people say you're crazy. Let me tell you, I like God more than anything else. I'm willing to die for Jesus. I prepare myself. If one day if I'm persecuted, I'm willing to die for Jesus. Then I won't deny Jesus. When I think of Jesus, I like Him. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus at the noon time. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down. Hallelujah. So just now I was talking about the third fruit. When we are saved, it's the relationship with God. And to love God with our, you know, with the, all our mind, all our soul, all our mind, uh, uh, I'm sorry, with, to love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, uh, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. So, how do we love God with all our feelings? Do you like food? Do you like food? When someone says, ah, oh, we're eating now, do you feel happy? When we say, pray, do you feel happy? Yes. I hope you feel happier yeah. when we say, let's pray. But some people don't like praying. They say, you're going to pray a long time. <laughs> but I hope when you think of Jesus, I like Jesus. Say it together. I, I like, like Jesus. Jesus. I want to be with Jesus. I want to be with you Jesus. You know, I like Jesus more than anything else. I, I like Jesus more than, more than anything else. else. I like Jesus more than my own life. I like Jesus more than my own life. So that's the key, to love God with all our mind, all our will, 
and all our feelings and also all our spirit the whole spirit now in Psalm 103 verse 1 all that is in me praise his holy name all that is in me that is the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit the whole mind the whole will the whole feeling and the whole spirit oh good yeah you know I always pray like this I don't have to cry out like this but my whole mind my whole will my whole feelings and my whole spirit oh hallelujah. and then I can feel the presence of God right away his joy and his power go through me and I see miracles but I saw many miracles this morning here I thank God for that hallelujah God is blessing this place I see more miracles here this morning than in many services thank God for that so when we love God with all our mind all our will all our soul God is going to bless you Amen. And then God gave me three kinds of prayer to build up relationship. First kind, write this down. Now, just now what I said, please write down. We want to first learn to worship God with our mind, whole mind, whole will, and the feelings, and then the spirit. If you have a pen, write that down. To worship with our mind, our will, our feelings, and our spirit. And then, there are three kinds of prayer that build up the relationship. One kind is prayer of grace. Prayer of grace. Grace is the undeserved blessings of God. That's grace. So we, you, we declare like this. God is loving me. Say it with me. God is loving me. God cares about me. God thinks about me all the time. God has a wonderful plan in my life. God wants to raise up my life. God wants to give me strength. God provides for me. Now, all these promises in the Bible. God do this. God does all these good things to me that you can declare every morning. When I wake up, first thing I say, Lord, the Lord is loving me. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the moment I wake up, I feel joy. The Lord is blessing me. Hallelujah. And actually all day long, I try to be in that condition. The Lord is loving me. Now many people feel bad about themselves. When you know that God loves you, you are a prince and a princess in God's sight, then you have more joy. I'm special. Say it with me. I'm special. I'm, special. I'm a prince or princess in Jesus. And God has a wonderful plan in my life. God is going to do more things in my life. God is going to use me greatly. So this is a prayer of grace. It will make you feel happy and strengthened and have hope, right? But people don't usually talk to you like that, right? Sometimes people yell at you. But God speaks to us in a way to build us up. So we want to use this word. It's from the Bible that God loves us, remembers. And the second kind of prayer is prayer of worship. It's from us to God. The first kind is from God to us. Prayer of grace is from God to us, and then the prayer of worship is from us to God. I worship you. Say it with me. I, I worship, worship you. you. I love you. I, love I, adore you. I adore you. And I also use some words people don't use that much in prayer. I like you. I, like I you. want you. I, want I hold on to you. I, I lean on you. <laughs> so any words you can use to express this love for Jesus, you can use. So this is a prayer of worship. And a third kind, let me tell you, these three kinds of prayer are very useful. I use it all the time and I get strength all the time. And that's why I have confidence and joy all the time. The third kind is interactive prayer. Interactive, I-N-T-E-R-A-C-T-I-V-E. -E. Interactive, I-N-T-E-R-A-C-T-I-V-E. -E. Now the Bible says that when we get close to the Lord, the Lord will get close to us, right? And then when we serve God, God is very happy, right? And He'll reward us. So everything we do, God will respond. And when we pray, does He respond? Yes, He responds. When we love God, does He respond? Yes, in Psalm 91, it says that because this person really loves me, 
Therefore, I will answer his prayer. I will uh, save him. I will deliver him. I will lift him up. I will put him in a high place. I will make him honorable. Psalm 91, you can go home and read that. The last part. So when someone loves Jesus, he is really going to respond. So when we pray, God is smiling. In Chinese, we have this expression. He's smiling, showing his teeth, and you don't see the eyes. You know, have you seen people like that? And they smile. You don't see the eyes, but you see the teeth. And God is laughing like that when you pray to him. You say, Jesus, I love you. And Jesus is very happy. Do you believe that? Yes. That's from the Bible. Uh, Zephaniah 3.17. Write that down. Zephaniah 3.17. Zephaniah 3.17. It says that the Lord rejoiced over us with singing. He quiet us with His love and rejoiced over us with singing. He sings over us. He's, he will sing like this. I love you. I love you. I love you. He will rejoice over us. God is like that. But many people don't think of God like that. Many people think of God. Many people think of God as being stern, very stern. But the Bible tells us a lot that God really is happy with us. So when you pray, God responds at the same time. So when I pray, I do this. Oh, Jesus, I love you. And at the same time, I will say, Jesus is now very happy. And I say, Lord, I need you. And then Jesus said, I'm so happy you need me. I'm going to bless you. So when I pray, I believe that God is reacting at the same time to me. He is very happy and He's blessing me. Now this is very helpful. Because many people pray like this. Oh Jesus, where are you? Why don't you come to help me? I'm in sickness. I need you. Come quickly to heal me. Many people pray like this. But when I pray, I pray like this. Oh, I love you, Lord. And I know God is very happy and God is responding to my prayer. God is loving me and blessing me. That is in the Bible, isn't it? That is faith. I believe God is responding to every action of ours if we love God. Say it together. I believe that God is responding to me whenever I love Him and serve Him and obey Him. God is very happy. Do you believe that? That's in the whole Bible. So, whenever you pray, you can say, God is very happy with me now. <laughs> but many people don't have this confidence. Because many people have been hurt by people many times. People say, you are no use. You are no good. You are never good enough. You don't pray enough. You don't read the Bible enough. You don't obey enough. A lot of people say things like that to us. So many people think it's very hard to please God. But I tell you, it's easy to please God. Why? Let me tell you. When we're not doing well, we repent. The whole heaven rejoices. Now say it with me. When we don't do so well, and we repent, the whole heaven rejoices. When we pray to God, and we love God, God is very happy. When we serve God, even when we give a cup of cold water, God will reward us. God is very happy. So we see from the Bible, Jesus tells us, even a cup of cold water. Is it easy to give a cup of cold water to someone? Yes. So Jesus did not say, you bring someone to me and then I'll reward you. Of course you will. But even when we give a cup of cold water, God will give us the reward. So God is saying, whatever little thing you do, I will reward you. But many people say, yes, I've done this. But there are many things I didn't do. Let me tell you, everyone has many things we didn't do. If we look at this thing, we'll say we always fall short of the glory of God. But God doesn't do that. God is looking at what you do. He's not looking at what you did not do. What you did not do, you repent and try to do it. But we can never be perfect. But you don't have to be perfect to please God. Say it with me. You don't have to be perfect to please God. Whatever we do for God, God is very happy. It's like parents with the kids. Now this kid, when he has the exam, had, had the exam last time, 
he only has 20 points and he failed. And this time he has 60 points and he just passed. What would the parents say? Now some parents would say, you only have 60 points, you should have 70 points, 80 points, you still not, you didn't work hard enough, you played too much. Now some parents talk like that. But some parents would say, well wow, last time you had 20 points, now you have 60 points, you're doing well, you're a good child, you'll be getting better and better. What kind of parents do you want to be? The first kind or the second kind? <laughs> but too many people are like the first kind, right? You don't do well enough. So people always look at what you did not do and then you feel discouraged. And you feel, I can't do nothing. I am no good. God doesn't like me. People don't like me. Many people feel like that. But God is not like that because He said even if you give a cup of cold water, you will by no means lose the reward. That means any small thing you do for God, out of honesty, out of love for God, God is very happy. Now say this. Any small thing we do for God. Any small thing we do for God. Out of a pure heart to love God. God is very happy. Now but when people are proud, they say, Wow, I have strong anointing. I have a lot of abilities. I love the gifts. Then God doesn't like that. But if you come to God and say, I'm nothing but you forgive me and you give me eternal life and I'm willing to love you and serve you, then God is very, very happy even though we are not good enough. God doesn't look at the things we cannot do well yet. You just ask God to forgive and then you work on it every day and God is very happy. Let me ask you, when you understand this, is it easy to please God? Is it easy to please God? Yes. We don't have to look at the failures. We repent of the failures, but now, whatever we do today, God is happy. Let me ask you, can you do something to make God happy today? Yes. 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 Is it hard? No. no. You can greet someone here. You can say some nice things to them. You can pray for them. You can care about them. You can visit them and help them. And God will be happy with you. Amen. And that's what I do all the time. I want to bless people around me. I always want to bless people. And God is happy. So, just now, I told you about to build up the relationship. You'll have these three kinds of prayer. First, prayer of grace. Second, prayer of worship. Prayer of in, the interactive prayer. Now, let me ask you. I'm going to say some prayer, and then you tell me what it is. Okay? Lord, I love you. What is it? That's worship. The Lord is loving me now. Grace. Grace, yes. When I pray, God is very happy. Interactive. Very good. Lord, I need you. What is that? That's worship too. From me to God. From me to God is worship. Whenever I do anything for God, He's happy. That's interactive. Okay? And God looks at me all the time. He cares about me all the time. Okay, now you know. So every day you say, when you wake up and you praise God, and God is happy with me. And then you'll be happy, right? Yes. Then you are more and more free and joyful. If we have burdens, we cannot have joy. And we cannot have a strong presence of God. And for me, all day long I say, I love God and God loves me. Hallelujah. I love you, you love me. I love you, you love me. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, I hope you can like that. So, number, the third fruit is the relationship with God. And number four is loving God. Loving God. God is so good. Do you want to love God? So, I hope you all love God. And the Bible says that, you know, that cursed is He who does not love the Lord. So, and then the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your will. So when God is so good, I hope you love God more than anything else, okay? Just now we talked about four fruits of salvation. One, repentance and turn away from sin. Say with me, repentance and turn away from sin. And number two, trust in God. 
Faith in God. Faith in God. Number three, relationship with God. Number four, love God. And then number five, six are action. Number five is obey God. Obey God. In Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. There it says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Now, who are these people who say, Lord, Lord? Are these people on the street? No, they have been to church. So they will say, Lord, Lord. Not everyone who says, Lord, but Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So only he who obeys the Lord can enter heaven. Now we are saved by grace, through faith. But when we are saved, then we obey, right? If someone says, I believe in Jesus, but he yells at people and kick people and hurt people and steal money, is he really believing in Jesus? No. So there are Christians, I've heard that. There are Christians who have a, what do you call it, an affair with another woman who have lusts all the time. There are people who steal money from the church and they think they can get away from it. Let me ask you, can anyone get away from the eyes of God? No, no one can get away from the eyes of God because He searches the mind of all people. That's in Revelation 2.23. He searches hearts and minds. No one can escape the eyes of God. He can see our minds. But many Christians think they can outsmart God. They think they, can, they are smarter than God. They think, I can sin this time and God won't see me. Is that smart? No. It is foolishness, but many people are like that. So it's very important that we obey the Bible. Now the two main things we want to obey are the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. Great commandment, great commission. Great commandment is what? Love the Lord and love people. That's the great commandment. And great commission, preach the gospel, baptize them, baptize them, and then also teach them to obey everything Jesus has commanded. So it's not just preaching the gospel. Help two people to be Christians loving God. I'm helping you now. I'm not just helping you to believe in Jesus. I'm helping you to believe and obey God and follow God totally because in the kingdom of God there are many Christians it's like a pyramid at the bottom there are many Christians who are weak who don't love God who don't obey God and these people they might not enter the kingdom of heaven and then high up there are Christians that are more steady high up there are some Christians who serve God but higher up, there are Christians who really take care of problems in their life. And then higher up, a Christian who serve God with strategy. And I'm looking for strategy, how to make the best use of my life. And I hope you go higher and higher. Do not just be lazy Christian. We'll be, if we're a lazy Christian, we're wasting our life. And when you're a diligent Christian, you love God, your whole life will be blessed. You can see blessing in me everywhere. Do you see blessings in me? Yes. Everywhere in my life is blessings. So I hope you hunger for that. Okay, the last point now, the sixth point, is serving God. The fruit of salvation is serving God. Only, now, only people who are changed by God and then they serve God are the born again Christians. Now serving God may not be serving God in a church. It can be serving God anywhere. For instance, the thief next to Jesus. Did he serve God? He did. He glorified Jesus. He said, this man has done nothing wrong. But we have done something wrong. We have done a lot of wrong things. And please remember me when your kingdom comes. So this thief right there, he served God, glorified God. Now, where is, does the Bible say that every Christian has to serve God? We don't go to heaven by serving God. But every Christian who are born again must serve God. It's in Matthew 25. In Matthew 25. In verse, now, there are three parables in Matthew 25. 
The second parable is the parable of the talents. Do you remember this parable? One servant with five talents, one with two, one with one. And then the two servants with the five and two talents, they came back and earned five and two talents. And then the master said, you're a good and faithful servant. But then the one with the one talent, what did he do? He buried under the ground. And then the master said, you are wicked, you are wicked, bad and lazy servant. And then he is thrown out into the darkness and he was gnashing his teeth. Is this person saved? If he's thrown in the darkness and was gnashing his teeth, is he saved? No, he cannot go to heaven. So this person did not serve God, he buried his talents. Let me ask you, have you used your talents for God? Now it can be anything. Serving God doesn't have to be in the church, but it's best in the church. Because in the church you can help other Christians and build up this group. But in the home, when you're nice to people, you're kind to people, you tell people about Jesus, you pray together, that is also serving God. And the third parable about a sheep and a goat. And then the sheep have done these good things to the little ones. Remember this parable? And then the goats are the ones who did not do it. And the sheep will go into what? Eternal life. And the goats will go into what? Eternal punishment. So they did not serve God, they did not bless other people, and they go into eternal punishment. So these verses are telling us, born again Christians, Christians who are saved, must have these signs. They must serve God. Not as a condition to be saved, but as a fruit. Now if you plant a tree, you plant a tree, you put a seed in a soil and put water there and there is a sun, and the tree will grow, right? Yeah. And then it will have leaves and fruit. But if you have this tree grow, it grows a little bit, and then it stops. No more leaves, no more fruit. It's all dry. Is this tree still alive? Year after year, it's still dry. Is it alive? No. Not alive. So, now this tree is not saved by the fruit, but the tree has life from the seed. But when this seed continues to grow, then it will have leaves and fruits. As a Christian too, when we are born again, when we follow God, then we will have fruits of salvation. If a person has no fruit, now what is a Christian without fruit? He always gets angry, he frustrates, and he always gets frustrated, he doesn't help people and yell at people easily, and doesn't love God. Whenever it's sermon time, what do they do? They fall asleep. When Christians like that, there is a danger they can lose salvation. Are you like that? Are you lukewarm or are you zealous for the Lord? You know, zealous for the Lord, you have a lot of blessings in your life. Let us look at these six things again. See if you remember. The six fruit of salvation. The first two related to salvation are Continue to repent and trust in Jesus. So this is how we are saved. He will continue to repent and trust in Jesus. And the next two related to what? Relationship. So what, what is the third one? He will have a close relationship with God. He will pray to God. He will respond to God. He will have this prayer of grace, prayer of worship, Prayer, interactive prayer it will help. Now these are the ways to, to help you. But you don't have to have that prayer to be saved. But this is a prayer that helps you to be more strengthened. And number four, what is number four? Love God. Love God. And then the last two related to what? Action. Or number five is what? Obey God. Number six, serve God. Let me ask you. Do you continue to repent of your sins? Are you aware of your sins? When the sinful thought comes to your mind, do you fight it back? When you're about to be angry with someone, do you fight it back? Let me ask you, are you willing to go home and be, to be nice to your family members, your husband and wife, yes. and children, and parents, to be nice to them? You know, today is Mother's Day, do you know that? Do you have Mother's Day here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mother's Day. Thank your mother. Be nice to your mother. 
Okay, so continue to repent and trust in Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Number three, what is it? Close relationship. Now, many of you don't remember. I hope you remember. Close relationship with God. And number four, love, love God. God. And number five, obey God. Number six, serve God. Now, three categories. The first category related to what? Salvation. Second category related to what? Relationship. Third category related to what? Action. Now say this again. Related to salvation? Related to relationship? Related to action. So we want to continue to repent of our sin and trust in Jesus and have the relationship and the action. And then you are a healthy Christian. But still healthy Christian, there are different levels. You look at me. In one meeting, are you blessed? Are you strengthened? Yes. In one meeting, you are strengthened. Yes. So you can go higher and higher up and you can bless many people. Do you want to go higher and higher up? Yes. You can do it. Say it together. We can do it. We can With do the help it. of God. Say to the next person, you can do it. You can, do you it. can serve God. You can, you can bless God. many people. Bless Let me ask you. Are you willing to repent of lukewarmness and say, I want to love God and obey God and serve God? Do you want to? Yes. Those who want to, you stand to the feet and say, Lord Jesus, I'm willing. I don't want to be lukewarm anymore. I don't want to be lazy anymore. I want to bear fruit. I want the presence of the Holy Spirit. I want a strong presence of God to change my life. If you want to, follow God totally. Stand to your feet. Lord Jesus, we want to. Please help us. Please help us. Please help us. We need you. We want you. Oh, now everyone speak to God. Lord Jesus, we need you. Help us to repent of our sins. Turn away from our sins. To have a close relationship with God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus, we need you. We need you. Help us to have a close relationship with God. Read the Bible and pray every day. Read the Bible and pray every day. And we want to love God. We want to obey God and serve God. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. And God can use us mightily when we love God. When we put down our sins. Lord Jesus, we want to repent. This lukewarmness. Many Christians think that they can be lazy Christians. So God says, when you're lukewarm, I want to vomit you out of my mouth. I want to throw you out from my mouth. And Lord Jesus, help us to love you. Help us to love you and obey you and serve you. Oh Lord Jesus, put fire in our heart. Put fire in our heart. Is there time to lay it on them or wait for God? But after the sun is over, should I lay it on them now? Or? Okay. Now you want a strong anointing of God. You want to follow God and serve God. Come forward. I'll lay it on you. When you experience the presence of God, keep that. Like victory. He said that after that first prayer, his prayer was changed.